Welcome back to Harbour Unboxed. It is time for another top five video. And for this one, we're taking a look at GPUs. It's been about a year since we last did uh, an update to this top five GPU series. And in fact, last time we did one, you couldn't really buy a graphics card. There was pretty much nothing in stock and prices were massively uh, inflated. So yeah, really time that we update this series. It's very much overdue at this point. So we have five categories for this one, uh, covering numerous price ranges. So there really should be something for everyone. So without wasting any more time, let's get into it. First up, we have the best entry-level GPU, and a year ago I went with the GeForce GT 1030 because at the time it was faster than the RX 550, at least for the most part. It did consume slightly less power, it overclocked better, and it was actually more affordable. However, it wasn't that long before AMD got their drivers sorted out and the RX 550 uh, hit the lead. It's technically a superior product anyway, so there's really no reason why it shouldn't dominate the GT 1030, and thankfully today it does. On top of that, I'd probably scrub the GT 1030 anyway, as it's become a bit of a disgraced product now that uh, Nvidia has quietly pushed out the DDR4 versions, and that did catch some gamers out, uh, providing them with a vastly inferior product for the same price. The horrible DDR4 versions range from $60 US right up to $135, and it really is difficult for gamers to know which one they're getting, especially if they don't know to specifically seek out the GDDR5 model, which they wouldn't know to do if they did their research when the GT1030 first came out. And in fact, even today, there isn't a whole lot of information about the DDR4 versions. If you go to research uh, GT1030 performance, you're likely going to find a review that's based on the GDDR5 version. And that is a big problem. And for this, we did label this as a disgusting move by Nvidia. And well, we stand by that. AMD's of course made a few branding blunders as well this year. And don't worry, we have pulled them up on those as well in separate videos. And we'll be touching on those again in another video very shortly. Anyway, the RX 550 is only around $10 more on average and we found it offers superior performance in a number of titles. We suggest looking at models priced at or below $90 US and all RX 550 models will deliver a similar level of performance. So again, focus on price. In my last top five GPU video, I recommended the GTX 1050 Ti as the best mid-range uh, graphics card, and this was because the Radeon GPUs were overpriced at the time. I commented that normally I would opt for the RX 570 at the $170 US MSRP, and back then they were selling for an insane $260 US, making them a bit of a hard pass. Today the RX 570 is selling for as low as $140 US, which is completely insane. The good kind of insane, of course, and it's the reason why Tim featured it in his 1080p uh, Ultimate Value gaming build. If you can't locate one for the $140 US price, there are only a few selling at that really low price right now, uh, you'll easily be able to get one for $150 US as there are quite a few models of the RX 570 selling for that price, so getting one in time for Christmas shouldn't be that difficult. Alternatively, if you don't want the Radeon GPU, you can get a GTX 1050 Ti for about $150 US, so that's a pretty decent backup, though I would go with the RX 570 personally as it offers vastly superior performance in most titles, including recently released titles such as Battlefield 5 and Hitman 2, so this really should be your number one choice. For those of you wanting to spend even less money, there is the GTX 1050 and RX 560, and they're both pretty good options. Uh, the RX 560 can typically be had for $120 US, and then the GTX 1050 for about $130 US. So with just $10 US between them, uh, my preference would be for the GTX 1050, though it's fair to say that both do provide a similar bang for your buck. Uh, that said, it would be well worth spending a little bit extra to get the RX 570 as it is significantly more capable than either the RX 560 or GTX 1050. Gamers looking to spend between $120 and $300 US have a few options to choose from, though there are only three GPU choices here. You can get a GeForce GTX 1060 with either three gigabytes or six gigabytes of memory, and technically they are two different GPUs, as the three gigabyte version is slightly cut down. Then we have the RX 580, which can be configured with either four gigabytes or eight gigabytes of memory, and you're actually getting the same GPU with either memory configuration. 
Last time I went with the three gigabyte GTX 1060s. It offered the best value thanks to inflated pricing of the Radeon GPUs, as well as the six gigabyte 1060 as that was a more popular choice amongst miners. That said, my preference would have been for the RX 580 at $200 for the four gigabyte version or $230 for the eight gigabyte model. At least those are the MSRPs. Sadly, back then the eight gigabyte model was selling for an insane $310 US and making it a complete write-off. Today though, the eight gigabyte model can be had for as little as $200 US, and oddly the four gigabyte models are actually more expensive, at least at the time of filming. In any case, $200 for an RX 580 is an amazing buy, especially considering that the GTX 1060 six gigabyte models cost at least $30 more and are for the most part slightly slower. The $200 RX 580 8GB models also make AMD's new Radeon RX 590 the most pointless product on the market right now. $280 for single digit gains. Yeah, that doesn't really make sense. So no thanks on that one AMD. I expect some price drops for those parts in the not too distant future because well, they sure as hell aren't selling at their current price. This has traditionally been a sub $400 US category, uh, targeting 1440p gaming. So that kind of scrubs out the new RTX 2070, uh, leaving us with Vega 56 and then the outgoing GTX 1070 Ti. There is a single Vega 64 card selling for $400 US right now, but most are priced a lot closer to $500 US, and therefore you'd just get an RTX 2070, and that would certainly be my number one choice at that price point. For less than $400, it's a bit tougher to pick which one to go with, whether it's Vega 56 or the GTX 1070 Ti, but ultimately I'm going with the GeForce graphics card on this one. By and large, the GeForce GPU offers the best performance, it's faster out of the box uh, in the vast majority of titles, it clocks better, runs cooler, and it consumes less power. Right now, the GTX 1070 Ti can be had for as little as $350 US, and getting one for $400 or less is very easily done. So don't expect to pay more than $400 for a GTX 1070 Ti, at least while stock lasts. Uh, picking up a Vega 56 graphics card for under $400 is significantly more challenging, and with most models priced uh, sort of mid to high $400 range, at that price point, you really are better off getting an RTX 2070. Ah, well, from the RTX 2070 and up, it's pretty much NVIDIA all day. The RTX 2080 certainly has no competition, and then the 2080 Ti uh, is far out in front of pretty much anything AMD has to offer right now. So a bit of an unfortunate situation. Hopefully that can be somewhat corrected in 2019. But for now, if you've got a heap of money burning a hole in your wallet, then you're pretty much going to dump that on an NVIDIA GPU. And when it comes to 4K gaming, you really want at least an RTX 2080 or GTX 1080 Ti, though you can't really buy the 1080 Ti's brand new anymore. And if your budget allows it, then there's nothing quite like an RTX 2080 Ti. For the 2080 Ti, right now, availability's pretty poor, reliability's still a little bit questionable, uh, the price is absolutely horrendous, and on top of all of that, ray tracing and DLSS look to be a bit of a bust for the most part. But boy oh boy, is the 4K performance absolutely glorious. It's a situation where I know I'm getting robbed, but I'm kind of happy to let it happen because damn, that 4K gaming with over 60 FPS in titles such as Rise of the Tomb Raider and Battlefield 5, yeah, it really is something to behold. I'm a bit ashamed of myself, but if you tried out one of those 4K 144Hz HDR monitors with an RTX 2080 Ti, you'd, you'd probably understand. It's pretty clear that AMD is doing their best to remain competitive where they can, and right now that is at the lower end of the market, but they seem to have it all pretty well stitched up there. For around $100, the RX 550 is a must. For $150, the RX 570 is an incredible buy, pretty much the best value all-rounder there. Uh, for $200 US, though, you really can't go past the RX 580, though I would sort of argue that it's probably not worth $50 more over the 570. But in any case, if you've got $200 to spend, and that is your best option there. For between $300 and $400 US, the GTX 1070 Ti seems like an obvious choice. And then once we go over $400 US, well, it's pretty much all NVIDIA. Well, that is going to do it for this one. If you like the video, you know what to do. And if you feel we got any of these picks wrong, then you also know what to do. Leave a polite rebuttal in the comment section down below, and I'll be sure to address it. 
If you enjoyed the video and you want to see more like it, you can subscribe to our channel. And if you appreciate the work we do at Harry Box, then you can support us directly on Patreon, gain access to our monthly live streams, our Discord chat, and all our behind the scenes content. Thank you for watching. I'm your host, Steve. See you next time.